Welcome to Ron Tate, where we bring you the best in movie recaps. Set in England's Dark Ages, the film commences with Vivian Nimue, the Queen of Blood, launching an assault on Earth with her dark creatures. The attack causes devastation, prompting King Arthur, the leader of the human race, to meet Nimue for reconciliation near the oak tree. However, without warning, he draws his sword and launches an attack on her. To prevent the evil queen from ruling over Earth, Arthur employs his unique weapon, Excalibur, to dismember and decapitate Nimue into multiple fragments. He proceeded to divide her body into several boxes and instructed his subordinates to disperse them throughout the world. Currently, Hellboy is on a quest to find an associate and comrade from that time. The team from the Bureau for Paranormal Research and Defense has been dispatched to probe a vampire nest in Tijuana. They rely on the reliable aid of Hellboy to track down Agent Ruiz, who they eventually locate performing in a wrestling match at an arena. Hellboy is challenged to a fight by the agent, who pledges to come back to the Bureau should he succeed. During the brawl, Hellboy endeavors to break the agent out of his wrestling persona but becomes suspicious upon observing his lengthy nails and fangs. In due course, Hellboy places the agent in a headlock and eliminates his mask, thereby uncovering that the agent has undergone a transformation into a monstrous vampire. Subsequently, Hellboy engages in combat with Ruiz and ultimately skewers him on a ring post. In Ruiz's dying moments, he reverts to his original form, informs Hellboy of the imminent apocalypse, and calls him by his true name, Anno and Rama. In the subsequent sequence, Professor Broom, Hellboy's foster father, dispatches agents to retrieve him. While he is busy drowning his sorrows in alcohol over the loss of his friend, Hellboy is located by agents who inform him of a request for his assistance from the Osiris Club in England. The club needs him to help track down three giants that are wreaking havoc. Hellboy Trave England after arriving to the Osiris Club, where he is greeted by Lord Adam, the club's leader, and his followers. In due course, Lord Adam escorts him to a private chamber, where he presents a collection of enormous heads acquired during their hunting expeditions. Additionally, Hellboy encounters Lady Elizabeth Hatton, a woman possessing an uncanny gift for precognition. She imparts to him the knowledge of his ancestry, which dates back to World War II, when Grigory Rasputin and his adherents endeavored to summon a weapon from an alternate dimension. The Bureau for Paranormal Research and Defense, aided by the renowned Agent Lobster Johnson, descends upon the site and eliminates the Nazis, including Rasputin, even though the club had received orders to eradicate anything that emerged from the portal. Professor Broom opts on Hellboy as an infant, to adopt him and utilize his abilities for the greater good. In the current time, a warthog infiltrates a church that houses silent monks, slaughtering all but a solitary survivor who he compels to lead him underground. Subsequently, the warthog locates a casket that contains a fragment of the Blood Queen's remains and coerces the monk into reciting a spell to rupture the sacred seal. Regrettably, when the monk declines, the warthog tears out his tongue and employs it to recite the spell, reviving the severed head of the Blood Queen. On the following day, Hellboy joins forces with the Osiris Hunters in order to combat the trio of colossal giants and embarks on a journey to reach their suspected whereabouts. Regrettably, the Hunters turn on Hellboy and proceed to repeatedly stab him with their spears, displaying an act of treachery. Attempting to resist, he finds himself overpowered and cast into the nearby river where Lord Adam shocks him with electricity. Nevertheless, just as Lord Adam is about to execute Hellboy, a colossal creature steps in and eliminates him, while the others turn against his allies. In the meantime, the Warthog recovers all the remains of the Blood Queen except for her left arm. Later on, Hellboy awakens to the sight of the giants devouring the hunters' bodies. Prior to leaping into action, the giants toss Hellboy around a bit, yet he still manages to sever their limbs, gouge out their eyes, and ultimately slaughter them. Once the fight is over, Hellboy once again loses consciousness. 
In the following sequence, we discover that Hellboy is saved from peril by Alice Monaghan, a juvenile female endowed with the ability to perceive the utterances of deceased entities. While conversing with Alice at her apartment, Broom and his agents suddenly burst into the room to confirm Hellboy's safety, and then Broom issues a warning. Hellboy seeks out Major Ben Daimyo to discuss the awakened Nimue and is instructed to bring Alice along for the mission to retrieve Nimue's remaining body part from their headquarters. Upon arrival at the Osiris Club's headquarters, the team discovers that Lady Hatton and everyone else present has been killed. Alice utilizing her gift of communicating with spirits contacts Hatton's spirit, who forewarns Hellboy about his actual fate. Meanwhile, Nimue is at large, searching for a king while also pursuing Gruagak, a swine-like entity that is attempting to pilfer the Blood Queen's remaining body part. Hellboy due to a vision induced by Nimue, becomes preoccupied and grapples with his sentiments regarding the treatment of beings that are not human. Exploiting this situation, Gruagak seizes the chance to abscond with the Blood Queen's final body part. In contrast, following the acquisition of Nimue's ultimate remaining body part, the witches successfully reconstruct her, and the Blood Queen is now fully prepared to annihilate humankind. Subsequently, the trio comprising Daimyo, Hellboy, and Alice head towards the Osiris Club headquarters. Upon arrival, Daimyo entrusts Hellboy and Alice to his subordinates while he procures a special bullet as a contingency plan to terminate Hellboy in case he undergoes a transformation into a demon. Whilst at the headquarters, Hellboy and his foster father, Broom, engage in a disagreement regarding the treatment of non-human animals, and Hellboy questions why he wasn't terminated despite being a deadly weapon. Upon hearing this, the professor endeavors to console Hellboy, recounting that he rescued him after recognizing his potential. Dissatisfied with the response, Hellboy boards an elevator intending to depart the office but is inadvertently transported to an alternate universe when he confronts the formidable witch, Baba Yaga. Seeking information on the Blood Queen's whereabouts, Hellboy implores Baba Yaga to divulge the details and reluctantly agrees to barter one of his eyeballs for her aid. Baba Yaga directs him to Pendle Hill before midnight, where the queen is said to regenerate her lost blood and augment her power. Following their agreement, Hellboy dupes Baba Yaga and manages to retain both of his eyes. Nonetheless, due to his deceit, she curses him, causing him to tumble out of her residence and back into the same office where the professor and Alice are present. Upon his return, Hellboy notifies them of the Blood Queen's whereabouts and departs without delay. In the ensuing sequence, the team journeys towards Pendle Hill, and Alice persistently inquires about the origin of Daimyo's scar. Finally, Daimyo recounts his tale of being the sole survivor of a confrontation with a demonic jaguar in Belize. Subsequently, they arrive near the hill and engage in combat with malevolent creatures while the Blood Queen replenishes her strength by retrieving her blood from an age-old oak tree. Eventually, the Blood Queen's treacherous witch, Genida, and her siblings arrive to pledge their allegiance, presenting Nimue with a crown adorned with thorns. However, Nimue, furious with their disloyalty, slays the sisters and commands Genida to place the crown upon her head immediately. Hellboy employs the Blood Queen unique bullet composed of Judas's silver and Saint Dominic's blood to shoot. As Alice and Daimyo battle the evil entities. Sustaining minor injuries from the bullet, the Blood Queen acknowledges Hellboy's presence and endeavors to persuade him to join her cause, but he declines. Nonetheless, prior to fleeing through a portal, the Blood Queen injects Alice with poison from a thorn in her crown. Subsequently, Genida appears and advises the team to seek Merlin, a wizard capable of reversing the effects of the toxin, to aid. Wasting no time, Hellboy transports Alice to the designated destination and rouses Merlin from his centuries-long sleep. Upon arriving at the wizard's tomb and awakening him, the team discovers that the thorn that poisoned Alice is the doing of the Blood Queen. Merlin subsequently strikes a pact with Hellboy to eliminate the Blood Queen prior to extracting the thorn from Alice. He discloses the veracity about Hellboy's lineage that he is the final descendant of King Arthur's bloodline, born to a mortal woman who wedded a demon. 
Subsequently, the wizard conjures Excalibur, the sole weapon capable of vanquishing the Blood Queen, and informs Hellboy that solely an heir of King Arthur can wield it. Nonetheless, Hellboy upon approaching the sword and attempting to grasp it, experiences a vision of himself annihilating humankind and elects not to seize it. Conversely, the Blood Queen's strength fully regenerated, releasing a lethal epidemic upon London, resulting in the instantaneous demise of numerous individuals. She subsequently infiltrates the team's headquarters, slaughtering all present, except for the absent professor. Meanwhile, the team proceeds to St. Paul's Cathedral, where they are confronted by a colossal warthog. Hellboy enters into a ferocious combat with the warthog but begins to falter. Witnessing his comrade's peril, Daimyo succumbs to his war jaguar form to assist in the battle against the creature. Nevertheless, despite their combined endeavors, the warthog incapacitates Daimyo and endeavors to slay Hellboy by causing rubble to plummet upon him. Abruptly, the Blood Queen materializes and halts the Warthog, revealing that she no longer has any need for him, and thus, betrays him by diminishing his size until he explodes in a gruesome fashion. The Blood Queen to a secret location Hellboy is lured by him beneath Cathedral, where she unveils the resting place of King Arthur's tomb and the Excalibur lodged in the stone. Hellboy remains resolute and declines to retaliate by taking the sword despite the Blood Queen's attempts. In a swift and savage act, the professor is slain by the Blood Queen with a flick of her finger. Overwhelmed with grief at the loss of his mentor, Hellboy implores him to stay, but it's too late as the professor has already passed away. Consumed by sorrow and fury, he seizes the Excalibur and metamorphoses into his ultimate demon king state, adorned with fiery crown and horns. He proceeds to initiate a gateway to hell, releasing massive infernal beings that unleash chaos and devastation upon London. Upon witnessing this, the Blood Queen is overwhelmed by Hellboy's might and presents herself as his queen. Alice discerns that Hellboy is being enticed and endeavors to awaken him by channeling the professor's spirit. As the breaches from the portal persist outside, the demonic beasts savage the populace and decimate the metropolis. With Hellboy's destiny appearing inevitable, Alice's scheme to rescue him could be their ultimate chance. By invoking the Professor's essence, she endeavors to arouse Hellboy from the Blood Queen's lore. Daimyo gets ready to neutralize him with a unique bullet if required, while the Professor's soul manifests and expresses Hellboy's deep-seated trust and paternal affection. Moreover, he impels Hellboy to choose between saving or destroying the world, and upon hearing this, Hellboy recovers his composure. With renewed clarity, he seizes the Excalibur and beheads the Blood Queen. By driving the sword into the earth, he dispatches all the infernal creatures back to hell. He then shatters his horns, hurls the Blood Queen's head into the abyss, and firmly shuts the gates to prevent her return. Upon observing everything, the professor's spirit vanishes, but not without expressing to Hellboy that choosing to be his father was the most excellent choice he ever made. Following that, Daimyo eradicates the unique bullet he had carried to assassinate Hellboy, but he keeps its contents concealed from Alice. The movie Six Months cuts to Hellboy, Daimyo, and Alice journeying to Siberia to confront the Atlantis Society. Before the assault on the antagonists, Hellboy activates Daimyo's where Jaguar metamorphosis, leading to the defeat of all the villains. Ultimately, the trio stumbles upon a tank housing Abe Sapien. The film culminates on a victorious tone, with Hellboy vanquishing the Blood Queen, resisting his urge, and persisting in battling alongside his comrades against wickedness.